Hey there, and in this video I will show you how you can actually use animation tracks to simplify your game code, your game logic, and your animations a little bit. So, for example, in this case, I have a pretty simple scene with a player moving around with my keyboard and just some coins that uh, it can collect. And as you can see, it does have uh, some animations. And when I check in the remote tab, uh, the main problem is that let me collect just all of them. And you will see that these coins continue existing even though they should have been deleted because I am not using any any of them. Uh, so we are basically wasting uh, some pretty interesting uh, resources that we could of course uh, be saving. So first of all, let's take a look at the coin itself. It just have this animation player with a collect coin animation that is played when uh, we collide with the player. And that's all that is happening. It is just a super simple animation that moves it up while it's being uh, made transparent. Now, of course, there are like many ways in which you can do this. Um, probably the main one that you have been using is basically connecting the animation player uh, animation finished. Okay, so you can even use the animation name. So um, if the animation that has finished, okay, its own name is collect coin then for example we would do a q3 okay exactly that so now technically let's open up the remote tab when we do this now as you can see the coins are being deleted uh, as i collect them and as they are as their animation is finished and this works as you can see and it's not going to be something bad in terms of performance or anything but when we want to perform such easy actions, there are a, even other ways in which this can be done efficiently. And this one is using an animation track directly over here. So the main advantage is that you don't have to modify the code. So it, it could be a little bit simpler, easier, and more straightforward. So what I have to do is to add here a track. And then what you have to do is to um, use a call method track. Then you select a node that you want, in which you want to call this um, this uh, function, and then you have this new track of coin in this case that is the root node, and you have functions uh, that you can call. So here you basically right click, insert key, and you have like here a lot of things that you can call. First of all, you have a script method. I have the on area entered on player animation finished. So here, if you have any kinds of method, you would be able to connect to it and call it in the inspector. This is going that we're going to be digging deeper in a second. But actually then, what you can do is to, for example, look for the Q3 method, okay? So you can add it, and now I have it. So wherever I want to delete the coin, I can do it directly over here. So for example, let's put it at the, at the middle of the animation, something like 0.25. So this would be, or should be at least in the middle uh, of the uh, animation. And I believe that yes, yes, it is. Um, so now when I play, you will see that my coin in the, in the middle of the animation is deleted. Okay, so the animation doesn't finish. Um, so basically what I could do is to move this to the end of the animation in 0.5 in this case. And now if I go to a remote tab, open it up, you will see that the animation plays fully. And once it finishes, it is deleted. And I didn't use any kinds of code. So everything is working as it should. And well, maybe it is a little bit more visual to do this. Now, this is also quite useful, um, not only for this, but for anything. So for example, when we collide with the coin, it means that if we are playing this animation, the coin has already been collected. So we don't want to collect it again. Uh, so for maybe what we would want to do is to disable the collision shape. And of course, once again, what we could do is to here, okay, play the animation and then grab the collision shape dot disable and make this true. This would disable it and would be okay. But once again, why would we put this code over here if adding it here in the animation would also be good and we would save some lines of code. So we can add the track. In this case, we don't want to call a method. We want a, to modify a property. Remember these things over here are called properties. And in this case, the properties inside of our collision shape. Oh, well, we have here like all the things that we can uh, modify, but in this case, we want to modify this bool disabled. Okay, we get this new animation track. We can right click, insert key, 
and then we can select it. The value in this case for the sale is going to be on. So disable if disable this on, the color shape will not work. I will put it at the beginning at time zero. So now um, what I'm going to do is let me check the first coin over here. This is coin one. So let me try to uh, do this. Okay, and uh, I will enable editable children. Let me see if we can actually see how this collision shape is being disabled okay so let's collide with it oh, well no i believe that no because i'm i am in in remote right now so let me go to uh let's check this one is over here so uh, i will play again go to a remote tab now here we are and here we can see the children um so let's check here the collision shape here we have the disabled property and <clears throat> let's check this and there you saw the disabled that is now enabled okay so there everything is working uh, as it should okay we can no longer collide multiple times with the coin now not only this but you can also do the same thing but uh, with the playing a sound so for example i will quickly add an audio stream player that i will call collect coin audio and i will drag and drop it over there so once again what we could do over here when we collect the coin we could call collect audio dots play but this play is actually once again a function a method that we can call directly in the animation player with a new track so i'm going to add a track in this case is it a property or is it a method this is a method play so collect coin audio right click insert key and once again we have here for example a play <clears throat> stop etc so there we can actually play it <clears throat> by the way you have arguments so uh, if you actually need to provide some kind of arguments you can still do it in this case for the play we don't want to provide any argument and we want to uh, do this in the as soon as this uh, starts so there we have it okay now i will play this Okay, it may have been a little bit loud, uh, but well, it is working as you have seen. So the good thing is that this literally has no limits. You can start <clears throat> calling a lot of methods from directly here. And even if you want to perform <clears throat> different actions um, directly with a function, you can do it. For example, a coin collected. This is just an example. Uh, so I'm going to print exactly that coin collected. So I will just move it here because it is this is a public function. Uh, and then in the animation player, <clears throat> I can add a track. I want to call a method which is inside of the coin. And once again, it is going to be over here, insert key. And now I find here script method and I don't find it because I haven't saved the changes. So I have to save them, insert key, coin collected, okay? And I will call this at the beginning. And for example, let's also do something more. So let's, for example, modify the modulate uh, to something like color.red, okay? Just to do something else. Of course, once again, you could do this directly here in the animation player, but I just want to create an example. So you will see here the message, okay? There we have it. And if you uh, so, saw two messages here, I think yes, because in the same place I actually had uh, two coins in the same place, but well, now it should not be happening. But anyway, I think that you were able to understand this.